All right, we're at the point where we're ready to create color separations for our four block print. I have made a full scale sketch in color that matches the size of the blocks that I'll be planning to print on. And I've also gone ahead and designed a key block. So the key block is a fourth block. So you'll have three process colors and then a fourth block that may be printed in black. Typically the key block has most of the information for all of the design, regardless of what color you choose to put in different areas. So it could be as simple as this, which looks kind of like a coloring book outline of your color design. Uh, it's not super exciting. It's just simply a contour drawing, but it does help keep the design organized. Another option for your key block is to create, instead of an outline, creating a fourth block that might add shadow. This could be printed in a transparent violet or a light gray. And uh, then when it's printed over the image, it creates a little more volume and, and interest and makes it a little bit more three-dimensional appearing. But um, it does make it a little bit harder to know in these areas where we have several different colors changing. It doesn't give us as much information to follow when we transfer this key design onto our other three color blocks. So for a beginner, it may be easier to choose a design that is more, more or less an outline of your key shapes to kind of help you keep things um, positioned correctly on the plates. If you're doing your sketches, in the first place, if you can limit the number of colors that you use to the same number of blocks that you've planned to print, and if you can match the color of your sketching materials, whether they're Crayola crayons or colored pencils or watercolors, if you can limit them, but also try to match the hue as closely as you can to the inks that you'll be using. So with the Akua inks that we're printing in, we have a quinacridone violet, which really is kind of a purpley pink. Um, it's not a true red in the way that you might think of a stop sign as being a true red. So choose a, a red that's a little bit more leaning toward purple. For yellow, choose the brightest yellow you can if you're trying to match our Hansa yellow Akua inks. This is um, quite a bright yellow. And then for the blues, depending on whether you're printing with ultramarine blue or phthalo blue, you might have two different choices. So the ultramarine blue is a purpley blue. It leans slightly toward red. The phthalo blue is definitely more greenish. So if you can find a crayon or a colored pencil that is closer to a turquoise color or slightly greenish blue, those will give you the best representation of how the colors will mix if you're using process colors for your four color block separation. So one approach is to put all the colors on the same sketch. And um, this might be enough information for you. If you feel like it's still kind of confusing and you're not sure which areas to cut out from which block, I would suggest creating a different layer of transparency for each color that you plan to print. So we already have a transparency layer for our line work that will be called our key block. And then we'll attach another layer. And for each one of these layers, we'll be assigning a color to that. So I wanna try not to cover up too much of the paper so that I don't block areas that I need to be able to cover, but I do wanna keep it from shifting around. So for this one, because there's so much blue in this image, I'm gonna start with my blue crayon and I'm gonna notice everywhere that has blue in it. So areas that are green or purple definitely have blue as one of those components. And the only areas that I'm not going to be coloring blue would be areas that I want to keep white and areas that I want to be yellow or orange or just pure red. So most of the block will have some blue on it. And in this situation, you know, that blue could serve as a key block because it, it has so much of the area indicated. So I'm going to keep the white mountaintop white, but I think all of this lower area has some blue in it, whether it's a green color or a purple color. So I'm gonna go ahead and just color this whole base area blue. Now, if I wanted some little yellow areas in any of the trees or planes down here, I could leave the blue off of those areas. But uh, as far as my sketch looks right now, it does have some blue in it. 
all of the sky will be blue, except for the clouds. This area underneath where the people are will be blue. And if I'm planning to print black on top of it, I don't need to worry about removing the areas of the blue block where the black needs to be printed because the black is opaque enough that it will just cover up the blue. So don't worry too much about having blue in areas that the blacks will be. Okay, so we've got the whole sky blocked in loosely here. And then some of these colors in the hot air balloon also have blue in it. So this one edge section is a purple, which needs some blue. And then this side, which will be a green area of the balloon also has blue in it. So kind of double check. Here I, I could decide maybe inside the basket, it might be good to have a transparent blue just to shift the color a little bit further away from these other two planes of that uh, basket. And I, I might print blue here on the inside of the balloon where the flame is burning to help separate that part of the ellipse from the surface of the balloon there. So I think that's, again, it can be pretty loose like this. There's not a whole lot of detail there, but it does, I might just even outline the areas what I want to, where I want to make sure that I leave those shapes white. Maybe just put a dotted line here to indicate that that really is on the balloon, even though it's all blue there. And again, I don't need to worry about cutting away where these black lines will be because the black will just cover the blue up. And one more cloud here. Okay. Now you can keep the blue on there as you build other layers uh, to help you see how they, they'll mix. So let's add a layer for the magenta color, the reds, next. I usually save the yellow for last because it tends to get overwhelmed by the stronger colors uh, that are the blues and the reds. So keeping that yellow on top helps it to show up a little bit better. Add one more layer of tape here. Hopefully we'll be able to still see through all these layers so we can get an idea of how those colors will mix. All right, now I'm thinking about where will the reds go? So one thing I want to do is separate the green of these pine trees that are in the foreground from the green of the hillside. And without adding another shade of green, the only way I can do that really is to either print some black under there or to print the red. So I'm going to try printing that red underneath the yellow and um, the blue or allowing them to mix on the paper. And I'm hoping to get a deep forest green. So I'll kind of plan out where those trees might be. And again, this, this is still not a super precise reference, but it's enough to help me remember to leave some areas on the plate there. And then I'll use my key block information for real precise detail. So let's block in the reds here. Until we get the yellow, this will appear purple, but knowing that that yellow is going to come in later. And then the mountains will also be, have a really sheer layer of red over them too. So I'm gonna to try to figure out where the meadow is and where the mountains are. Somewhere here. And then I also will kind of mark simplified out, outline so we have an idea of where to. So I'm just kind of using a hatching pattern here. So notice right here, these reds are going to blend together until that yellow separates them. That's okay. And then let's look up here. I want a little bit of orange on one side of the basket. So I'll print red just on one half of that shape. And then I want red where the flames are coming up. There's no red in the areas that stay yellow, but there will be red on all three of these sections. We want this to shift to a purple. We want one segment that is just the red by itself. And then there'll be one segment where the red mixes with the yellow. So this one also will have some red in it. And 
and I'll trace those out to just help me remember. All right, let's double check that there's no red in any other areas. I think we're good. All right, so we've got a red layer, our blue layer, and then finally we'll bring in a yellow. So for the yellow areas, it will be printed on the trees in the foreground, on the meadow in the midground, and in the, the hot air balloon as well. So let's go a little bit brighter with the yellow. It tends to not show up as well as the other colors. If you have access to a light table, this might make seeing those colors a little bit easier. The other thing you can do is you can hold up your tracing paper to the window and see the light shining through there to help you see how the colors will mix. This whole basket shape will be yellow. And this area, I am debating whether to add yellow to the flame. I think that might be nice. So we'll go ahead and color over the, all right, now up here, I need to be careful. So there's no yellow in the purple area or the red area, but there will be yellow in all three of these areas. So I'll add yellow to the blue to get a green here. I'm gonna add yellow to this red to create an orange. And then we'll have some areas that just have the pure yellow in this middle section. And outline one more time, make sure we're a little bit more specific about where those shapes will. And I think we're okay down here. All right, it's kind of a simplification, but it gives us the basic patterns. And then what we can do is we can pull off each of these layers and label them. So there's our yellow. Our red and our blue. So when we get our key block transferred to our other three blocks, then we can go back and use this as a rough reference for which areas to leave on the block. So on the red block, I need to leave all of these areas uncut. On the yellow block, we'll be leaving these areas uncut. And on the blue block, we're leaving quite a bit of the plate uncut. I noticed I didn't outline this very well, so I'm going to line that again and, and trace that a little bit better. I think I'll let the people get printed right over top of that. I won't worry about cutting them out. And actually, I think I will keep the inside of the basket blue to give me a little bit of difference. So that's pretty well defined now. The next step is to use your tracing paper or transfer paper to transfer your key block to your key block design to the block itself. And remember, if you put it on the block this way, then it actually is going to print backwards. So you decide if you like the composition backwards or if you prefer to have the print turn out the way that your sketch started. In that case, you would uh, you know, reverse your tracing paper and transfer the line work so that the balloon's on the other side of the composition. So I won't go ahead and show you that on a demo, but I'll, I'll transfer the image to the block, I will carve it and then we'll pick up again with how to transfer that key image to your color blocks.